Okay. Um, we're going to go through as much of this as we can, and then we'll take a short break, and then we'll come back and finish whatever we don't finish here. Okay. So this last chapter or last section in your chapter is called solving trigonometric equations. And so we're going to start pretty simple here. Okay. Um, if you have your unit circle already printed out, that is probably a really, really good thing. It'll be very helpful as we go through these questions uh, because ultimately we're going to be finding values on our unit circle. Okay. All right. So example number one says cosine of x equals negative one. So if someone were to translate this in words, what does that, what is this question asking us to find? The angle that cosine is minus one. And what is cosine on our unit circle? The x value. Okay, good. So find the angle with x value of negative one. Good. What if I change this question to say sine x equals negative one? How would that change what you're looking for? You would try and find the y value? Yeah, you would try and find the y values of negative one. And if I said change it to tangent x, then you'd be looking for a y over x value that reduces to negative one, okay? So let's go through our unit circle. And we are going to actually showcase two different possible sets of directions, okay? So the first thing I could ask you is to say, hey, I'd like you to go from zero to two pi, which is the same as once around the unit circle, okay. once around the unit circle. And I'd like you to find all of the angles once around the unit circle that have an x value of negative one. And so you look at your unit circle and you're like, oh, it only happens one time. It happens at x equals pi, okay? So if I say, from zero to two pi, what I mean is look once around the unit circle and find all the angles that make that true. And in this case, we only have one angle that makes that true, okay? Another way that I could ask you to answer this question is to find something called the general solution. And what that means is not just once around the circle, but I want to find every single solution if I kept going around the circle as many times as like I wanted, an infinite number of times. So what we do is we take our answer from the once around the unit circle. And the easiest way to do that is to say, I'd like you to keep this answer and every answer that is one more time around the unit circle or as many times around the unit circle as I want. So the two pi part refers to once around the unit circle, okay? Two pi means once around the unit circle. The K, okay, is an integer, any integer you want. Could be one, could be two, could be negative five, okay? And that just tells you how many times around the unit circle. Okay. 
So if I say go once around the unit circle, find your answer, you say x equals pi. But if I say give me the general solution, you're going to say x equals pi plus as many times around that unit circle as you want. So that's the 2 pi k. All right. Any questions about example one? Just a curiosity question. Is there any reason why you wouldn't just use like an infinity or something? Because I want every time I hit that angle, which is every time around the unit circle. So if I put an infinity in there, that just means I went around the circle an infinite number of times and I didn't stop. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So every time you went around, you stopped, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. got it. So like, here's my angle, right? So if I go halfway around, that's my pi. But if I said k equals one, I would go halfway around, I would go all the way around, and then I'd go halfway and I get back to that same angle. I understand. Thank you. Thank you for asking. That's a great question. All right. Well, let's try this one. Okay. So Tangent of theta equals root three means find an angle with y over x reducing to equal root three. All right, so take a look at your unit circles. I want to find a y over x that when I reduce it, gives me root three. So where is that on your unit circle? Pi over six. Sorry, um, I mean, pi over three. Pi over three, I buy that. Theta equals pi over three. And just to, for a moment, let's take those x and y values. We get root 3 over 2 over 1 half, which gives us root 3 over 2 times 2 over 1, which gives us root 3. Yeah. Okay. So you do have to do a little bit of work for the tangent ones, but all you need to do is just divide those fractions and simplify, and you should get that answer. Okay. But I would say there's one more value that makes this true. What is the other angle that makes this statement true? Four pi over three. Four pi over three, good. Okay. So if I visualize what I have, my angles were, one of those angles was pi over three. And the other angle was four pi over three, okay? Now, if I think about general solutions, that means I want to go to pi over 3. I'm going to stop here. And the next time I stop is going to be here. And then the next time I stop is going to be back at pi over 3. So one way I could write this is theta equals pi over 3 plus 2 pi k and theta equals four pi over three plus two pi k. That's one way to write it, but it's not the most efficient way to write it, okay? What might be a more efficient way of writing a general solution for this case? Pi over three plus pi k. Yeah, pi over three plus, I stop every half time I go around the unit circle. So I don't need two pi k, I just need pi k. And this would be the most efficient way of saying it. And probably if you're comparing answers with a textbook, this is the way it's gonna be written, not the other two ways, okay? 
Now, some of you might also remember that tangent, you only add pi because it's the same every pi, but sine and cosine, it's every two pi. All right, any questions about number two? All right, let's ramp things up a little bit. Example three is two sine three theta plus root two equals zero, all right? So some good first steps here. I'm gonna move this and I'm gonna move this to the other side. So kind of like we did with our exponentials and logs, we isolated our exponential or we isolated our logs here in trig equations, we're going to isolate the trig expression. So I'm going to subtract the root two first, and then I'm going to divide by two. And that's going to give me sine of three theta equals negative root two over two. And what I'm going to do real quick here is I'm going to let a equal three theta. I'm gonna do a little substitution. And so that's gonna allow me to write my question as sine A equals negative root two over two. And so I'd like you to find the angles on the unit circle that give you a Y value of negative root two over two. And there should be two of them. Five pi over four. At five pi over four, yeah. And seven pi over four. And seven pi over four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if I asked you to find a general solution to each of these, you would add a plus two pi k. Because for each one, you would stop. And then the next time you would stop would be one more time around the unit circle. And then one more time around the unit circle. But this general solution can be helpful when we have multiple angles so that we know how to actually get to our answer. Because right now I have an answer for A, but I do not have an answer for theta. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first one, A equals 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. And instead of a, I'm going to sub back in 3 theta. So 3 theta equals 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. Okay, that's really what I solved for. Now, I want to find theta, not 3 theta. So how do I get rid of that 3? Divide. Sorry, you go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think you were both going to say the same thing. You were going to divide by that three, right? And that's exactly correct. So what does that give us? Instead of five pi over four, we end up with five pi over 12, because I have to divide by three. And instead of stopping every one time around the unit circle, or every two pi, I'm stopping every two pi over three and every multiple, okay? So this theta equals five pi over 12 plus two pi over three K is actually our general solution for the first answer we got. Now let's do the same thing with the second one. We're gonna let A equal three theta again. And instead of five pi over four, we have seven pi over four plus two pi K. 
And so we're going to use that same strategy. If I want to get theta, I got to divide everything by 3. So I'll end up with 7 pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 3k. And this would be the second part of my general solution. OK? Any questions on number 3? I have a question. Are you going to ask us for one general solution or do we, do we have to put both of them? You have to understand both of them. Okay. So like how do you find a specific and also how do you find the general solution? Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions on example three? So well, let's try example four, okay? So this time, all that stuff that's like extra, like it's not just cosine x, right? We've actually got this whole expression here that I'm finding the cosine of. But that doesn't change the fact that I'm finding an angle with an x value of zero, right? Because I still have cosine equals zero. So let's start by finding um, the angle that makes that true. And I'm gonna do another substitution. I'm gonna say let a equals two x minus pi over four. So really, we have cosine of a equals 0. What are the values for a that make that true on the unit circle? Three pi over 2 and uh, pi over 2. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that's what A equals. So I'm gonna sub back in what I said A equal, which is 2X minus pi over four. So really I have 2X minus pi over four equals pi over two. And so to get X by itself, I'm gonna add pi over four, that gives me three pi over four. And I'm going to divide by 2, which gives me 3 pi over 8. Okay. So if I wanted a general solution, I could say, or a, 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 just like a regular solution, I could say that. <clears throat> if we wanted the general solution, we can't just throw a plus 2 pi k at the end here. We would actually need to have built that in. So 2x minus pi over 4 equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. And we can follow the same uh, algebraic steps that we did for the specific solution, but now we just need to do it with the 2 pi k as well. So I could still add my pi over four, but when I divide by two here, I don't just divide the three pi over four by two, I also divide that two pi k by two. So I get x equals three pi over eight plus pi k. Now we could do the same thing down here if you wanted to get a specific solution. You just set that equal to the three pi over two instead of pi over two. And you work through it by adding your pi over four, which should give me, let's see, six, seven pi over four. And then I could divide by two and I get seven pi over eight. 
Or if I wanted to do the general solution, I could do the same thing, but throw that two pi k on the end at the beginning, and then just make sure I include that as I divide things away. So two x equals seven pi over four plus two pi k, but then when we divide, when we divide, we get x equals seven pi over eight plus pi k. Right. So in general, when we're looking for general solutions, we just need to throw that two pi k in the beginning and then whatever we divide by, we need to make sure we divide that two pi by. But what might be another way I could have approached the problem as soon as I found these two answers for A? Well, from the beginning, you might have noticed that a and the pi over 2 and the 3 pi over 2 are only separated by pi. And so if you wanted a general solution, you could have said 2x minus pi over 4 equals pi over 2 plus pi k. Because I'm only going around, I'm stopping every half time around the unit circle. And so we could take the two answers that we got here and actually combine them. Into the first one, but we stop every quarter circle around. Okay, but those two are equivalent. If you're looking for an answer in the textbook, you're probably going to have the second one not the combination of the first two. All right. Any questions on example four? All right. Let's try example number five and then we'll go on a break. All right, so example number five. Two sine squared minus cosine x minus one equals zero. Ideas. Anybody have any ideas? You would factor it first. Mm, you can't factor it, not yet. I have a sine and a cosine mixed together, so I can't factor right off the bat. But we will use factoring at some point, so you're in the, headed in the right direction. But how can we get it to a form that is factorable? I convert the sine to the second power x to cosine thirds. You're just changing sine squared to cosine squared? Yeah. yeah. Well, you can't just change it to cosine squared. I mean, using the Pythagorean theorem. Ah, OK. That we can do. So Pythagorean theorem, we have sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So everywhere I see a sine squared, I can write one minus cosine squared. Yeah, I believe that. So we're gonna take sine squared and we're gonna replace it with one minus cosine squared. That's gonna give us two, one minus cosine squared minus cosine x minus one equals zero. And then I'm gonna go ahead and distribute this two. So I get 2 minus 2 cosine squared minus cosine x minus 1 equals 0. And if we wanted to use David's strategy of factoring, let's combine some like terms first 
And I also want to make a substitution to help us maybe see that a little bit better, okay? So this two and this minus one are gonna make one. But I'm also gonna move everything to the right hand side because I like for my squared term to be positive. So I'm gonna get zero equals two cosine squared plus cosine x minus one. And then I'm gonna let a equal cosine x. So what I really have is a dressed up quadratic, 2a squared plus a minus 1. Now this step is optional. You don't have to do it, but I feel like if you are distracted by all the letters that we have in the equation, this is a nice way to pare it down to what you're really doing, which is now, we're gonna factor, okay? All right, 2a squared plus a minus one, what does that factor into? Two a minus one and a plus one. All right, let's try it. Two a minus one and a plus one. Yep, yeah, that looks like it works. So that means we have one a value of one half and another a value of negative one. Okay. Now, if we were solving for a, we'd be good to go, but we need to solve for x. So what that means is we really have cosine x equals one half, and we have to find the x values that make that true, and we need a cosine x that equals negative one, and we need to find the x values that make that true, okay? So take a moment, and I'd like you to find both one time around the unit circle and general solutions that make both of these true, okay? So take about a minute or so to write down what your answers are, both one time around the unit circle as well as general solutions. And then we'll check those together and then we're gonna move into a short break. All right, so hopefully you're getting something kind of like this. For cosine equals one half, that should be at pi over three and five pi over three. And if we wanted to write them as a general solution, that's the one I put the box around, pi over three plus two pi k, or five pi over three plus two pi k. And then for the second piece, we wanted to find where cosine equals negative one, that only happens one time at x equals pi. 
or if we want the general solution, we have pi plus two pi k to show all the extra times around the unit circle, okay? Any questions on example five? All right, so we're gonna take a 10 minute break. Okay, we'll be back here at 1.10. Um, I think we're going to finish class a little early, so if any of you have individual questions you'd like to talk to me about, we could probably do some of those right at the end of class, okay? But let's take a 10-minute break, so we'll meet back here at, at 1.10. All right, folks, welcome back. We are going to finish up uh, from section 7.5, the equation solving. And then again, I think we'll have some time at the end. So if there are folks who need to speak with me about anything, um, I can talk to you one at a time. I might just ask other people to wait in the waiting room, the virtual waiting room, uh, so that we can have a conversation that feels uh, good to you. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. All right, so we are down to example number six, all right? So again, when looking at these equation solving um, problems, it's really important to have that list of all your, um, of all of your identities so that you can kind of think about which identities you're gonna need, all right? So if you go back and you study tonight and you're looking at all the other old lessons, think about how did we know what identity to use where? And that's really the part that I think is gonna help you folks find success tomorrow is practicing that decision making, okay? So let's take a look at this right here. I've got four sine squared x tan x minus tan x equals zero. Strategies, what are people's thoughts? Convert everything to sine of cosine. You could convert everything to sine over cosine, yeah. What's another strategy? We can take the right. tan in common, like a, we can take the tan out. So we could look to factor, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Any other strategies that are jumping out to folks right now? Could we move uh, the sign to the other side? Kind of like separate them by the the equal sign. How what would that look like? Uh, like subtracting four sine squared or something like that. Ah, uh, you can't subtract it because it's a attached to that tangent with the multiplication. Oh. Okay. Mm. So yeah, there's a minus sign in between, but you have to look at how things are attached. So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't subtract that because that would be an illegal algebra. Okay. Okay. Well, I think these are two good ideas to start with. Um, for me, one thing that jumped out at me was factoring. Okay, and we might use converting things to sine and cosine later on, but let's try and make things simpler before we try and make things much more complicated, unless we know that there is an identity that will, it will be helpful if we convert everything to sine and cosine, okay? So if we factor out the tangent, we'll have four sine squared x minus one, equals zero, okay? And we can actually factor this 
even more. Because this is our a squared minus b squared, which factors into a plus b times a minus b. So we could really write this as tan times 2 sine x plus 1 times 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0. All right, so lots of factoring here. Now, again, it might be helpful at some point to convert to sine and cosine, but I'm not convinced yet that we need to do that, OK? But given the setup here that we have in this bottom line, how many solutions are we going to have? Like, how many mini equations? Yeah, we're going to have three, right? So we're going to need to take this first term set it equal to zero, and we'll solve for that, okay? Then separately, we're gonna need to take this term, set it equal to zero, and solve for x. And then we're gonna need to take our last term, set it equal to zero, and solve for that, okay? So for tangent x equals zero, which angles, when I take the y and I divide it by the x, will I get a zero? And let's start with once around the unit circle. Zero, pi, and two pi. Yeah, we've got zero and we've got pi. And we're not going to include the two pi because usually when we say once around the unit circle, it's like zero included, but two pi is not included, okay? Now with this two sine x plus one, if I solve for sine x, I'll get sine x equals negative one half. And so let's find all the values on the unit circle that make this true. That will give us, 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6, okay? And then last but not least, if I take this last term, I get sine x equals 1 half. So now I'm looking for all the x's or the angles that have a y value of 1 half. Okay, so if you were asked to find the solutions from zero to two pi, you would have these six answers, all right? Any questions about example six? Okay. I have a question about this. If for in, if in another example it were cot instead of tan, would that just mean that x equals undefined? I'm 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 not clear on your question. Uh, let's just say, or if tan x equal was equal to one. Wouldn't that mean it's one over zero? Would that just be undefined? No, if tangent is equal to one, then it's something over something. They have to be the same number. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. Yep. All right. One last thing about this converting to sine and cosine. If we tried to do that here, we would end up with four sine squared x O times sine x over cosine x minus sine x over cosine x. And just from looking at that, it doesn't make anything simpler because there's nothing I can really cancel. So I think if anything, this one might make it a little bit more complicated. I wouldn't necessarily convert to sine and cosine here, okay? It's not that it's wrong, I just don't think it'll take you in the 
direction that you want to go, which is to a point where you can find an answer. All right, we've got one last question to take a look at, and that is this one. Cosine of 2x times secant of 2x plus 2. So take a moment to look at that equation and think about what strategies we might want to use here. Okay, and like before, let's kind of throw out a few different strategies. Um, if, I, if I go with your strategy, that just means we happen to be thinking similarly. If we don't go with your strategy, I think it's also important to hear why maybe that's not the best choice for this particular problem. But it doesn't mean that that strategy might not be a good choice in a different problem. Okay. All right. Are there any strategies that are jumping out at folks? Can we uh, convert the sec into one over cost and then distribute the cost 2x and then the cost 2x, cost 2x cancel out. So we left with one plus two cost 2x. Okay, let's back up to that first step again. What did you say? Just the first step. Uh, we can uh, convert the sec, sec 2x into one by cost 2x. Okay. So let's see what that gives us. Cosine of 2x. 1 over cosine 2x plus 2. So that was what she was saying as a first step. Yes. Does anybody have a different first step that they wanted to throw out there? Uh, would it be cosine of 2x equals 0 and secant of 2x plus 2 equals 0? Yeah, if you look at these, this one is multiplied to this. So in one sense of the word, it's already factored for you. So we could say cosine 2x equals 0 and secant 2x plus 2 equals 0. So we could split it right off the get-go. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So for funsies, let's do both methods and kind of see where that takes us, okay? Because I think sometimes I say like, oh yeah, there's more than one way to do the question, but that's not very convincing if we haven't seen that, bo that both ways work, okay? So let's start with the first way where we convert secant to one over cosine using the reciprocal identities. And then we distribute, so that's gonna give us one plus two cosine 2x equals 0. That gives us cosine 2x equals negative 1 half. Or I can think about all the angles that have an x value of negative 1 half. So that'll be pi over 3 is one of them. Or where's the other angle that has, oh no, not pi over three. An angle that has an x value of negative one half. What is that, two pi over three? What's the other angle that makes that true? Four pi over three? Yeah, four pi over three, good. So I'm setting this up to write my answers as a general solution here, okay? So this would give me x equals pi over 3 plus pi k, or x equals 2 pi over 3 plus pi k. All right. So those were the solutions we got using the first method. Let's set up the second way, solve the second way, and see if we get the same answers or not. Okay. So cosine 2x equals 0. That means what angles have a x value of 0? And I know that that is at pi over 2 plus 2 pi k, or 2x equals 3 pi over 2 
plus 2 pi k. And then I could divide by 2 to get my general solution. And if we solve the other one, let's see what we get. Secant 2x equals negative 2. OK, well, secant, I think it's easier for us to think about cosine than it is secant. So oftentimes when I get to a situation that involves like secant or cosecant or cotangent, I just flip both sides. So instead of secant of pi over of 2x, I write cosine of 2x. So I flipped the left-hand side. And instead of writing equals negative 2, I flip the right-hand side, I get negative 1 half. And that's exactly what we saw over here, that the, the solution to this part is going to give us this and that. Okay, we already solved that earlier, so I don't want to do that work again. But what happened when we distributed? Because we only got some answers, but when we look at our equation solving, when we didn't distribute, we got these other answers. So which one's right? The right side. Why? Because we're missing the value, two values from the left side. Yeah, so when we're looking at this, okay, I think if it's already factored, the safest bet is to just set those two factors equal to zero right off the bat. That way you don't lose any solution, okay? It's not that the left-hand side is wrong. In fact, you did a lot of good work there, but what you did accidentally was lose some solution, okay? So I don't want to do another problem, but I want to show you another case where if you move some things to the other side, you might lose a solution, okay? So for example, if I had sine squared, two sine squared x plus sine x equals zero, okay? Some folks would say, oh, let me factor out that, let me factor out that greatest common factor. And then instead of setting each factor equal to zero, so this is what you should do, right? You set that one equal to zero. You set this one equal to zero. Sometimes what folks do in an effort to simplify, they're like, I'm just gonna divide everything by sine x. And then they get two sine x plus one equals zero divided by sine x. And then they solve and they only get some of their solutions because when they divided, they lost some solution, okay? So usually it's in your best interest to keep everything on one side, set it equal to zero and factor. That way you don't lose any solutions. And if it's already factored, if you keep it factored, then you'll get all of your solutions as opposed to this left-hand side where we lost a few along the way, okay? All right, so folks, that's it for 12, uh, sorry, not chapter 12, 7.5, all right? So I'm gonna stop the video right here and stop the share.